What's going on guys? My name is Wade with Tech Daily. So every year I like to do a camera comparison between the regular iPhone and the Pro iPhone. This year, of course, we've got the regular iPhone 14 and the iPhone 14 Pro. And the reason I do this is because Apple emphasizes camera tech improvements more than almost anything else. And with the iPhone 14s, the cameras seem to be one of the few remaining differentiating features. Both phones have gotten plenty of camera upgrades over the last couple of years. The Pro phones are of course still still better, but I'd argue that for most people, the difference in going pro is probably not worth it. So I'm gonna walk you through all the differences with the cameras on these two iPhones, and we'll of course go through a ton of picture and video samples so that hopefully you end up picking the right iPhone 14 for your needs, and at least understand what you might gain in going pro or miss out on with the regular. To just quickly touch on the hardware, the regular iPhone 14 still has two camera lenses around back, the Pro has three, and the differences begin with the main lenses. The regular iPhone 14 has a 12 megapixel main shooter, while the Pro gets a brand new 48 megapixel lens. That new 48 megapixel lens on the Pro does unlock some additional features, like Apple's new super detailed Pro Raw shooting mode, which I'll touch on. Though honestly, I don't know that the average everyday person would be shooting in that mode very often. As for the secondary lenses, both phones have similar 12 megapixel ultra wide shooters, but they aren't exactly the same. The Pro seems to have a slightly upgraded one, and it again yields an additional feature, macro mode. The Pro uses the ultra wide lens to automatically enable better super close up images. The regular 14 doesn't have any macro mode. So if you're taking a picture of something small or something up close, the 14 Pro is going to be the better option here. Finally, the Pro also has a third lens that the regular 14 doesn't, a telephoto lens. With this, you're going to get three times optical zoom, 15 times digital zoom, and some additional portrait picture modes with varying depths of field for different looks. And with the selfie cameras, as far as I'm aware, there's no difference hardware-wise between the two phones. And I'll show you some picture samples in a second that should confirm that. Now, in addition to camera hardware differences, both phones also have different capabilities when processing images and videos as well. The Pro iPhone has a better processor than the regular 14 this year, and with certain things like low light and night mode imagery, the Pro iPhone is still going to outshoot the regular iPhone 14 in most situations, but we'll get into all that in just a second. By the way, to keep my new iPhones protected this year, I've been using some Casetify cases. They were kind enough to sponsor this video, and they just launched their new Bounce series, which is their most protective case yet. Casetify has the widest selection of case designs available. They sent me over a bunch to check out some pre-made styles, some custom ones with my name, and along with being super stylish, they're also super functional. Casetify's new bounce cases go far beyond the usual level of protection. In fact, they're six times stronger than the military grade standard and can handle a drop from more than 21 feet in the air. This is all thanks to a new design with EcoShock technology. That's the embedded X pattern in the back plate and twister design inside that dissipates the shock and energy from a fall. And there's extra protection on all four corners of the phone too. The corner of the phone is its weak spot, so it makes sense to have those expanded edges for extra shock dispersion. And everything else is protected too. There's a thick rubber edge for the camera, a raised lip to protect the screen. You can also throw on one of Casetify's screen protectors, but altogether you get 360 degree protection. By the way, these bounce cases are MagSafe compatible and they're sustainable, made from recycled materials. Casetify offers fun, unique, and most importantly, ultra protective products. And their new bounce cases are their most protective ones yet. Head on over to casetify.com slash techdailyyt or click the link in the video description for 15% off one of their unique styles. And thanks so much again to Casetify for sponsoring this video. Okay, so let's get into some picture samples now, and we'll start with the selfie cameras. Like I mentioned, there's technically no real difference in hardware or even capabilities between the two phones. And when the conditions are identical and the shots are relatively close, I think you can pretty much see that. Whether it's a regular selfie or a portrait selfie, to me, everything looks the same. The color, the contrast, the exposure, the detail, even zooming on in, I can't see a difference. For regular selfies under normal conditions, the 14 and 14 Pro should shoot about the same. For nighttime and low light selfies, I actually do think the 14 Pro has an advantage here, and this makes sense. Apple actually emphasized low light selfies, particularly portrait selfies, on the last few Pro iPhones. And while the regular 14 is definitely better now too, the 14 Pro seems to still offer a brighter, more colorful, and much more detailed low light selfie image, though the difference is far less than it's been in years past. All in all, if selfies are your thing, it doesn't really matter which you choose the end result is about the same. So now let's actually talk about the camera differences so you can understand that up front. Starting with macro mode, and this is pretty straightforward, the 14 Pro can take really good close-up pictures 
the regular 14 can't. In fact, if you try to take a picture of anything closer than about six inches, the regular 14 can't take the picture at all. The 14 Pro can also get really, really close to your subject and produces some incredibly detailed images of stuff that's super small. And compared to last year, where the 13 Pro's macro mode was kind of finicky and inconsistent, the 14 Pro's macro mode is way better with how it transitions as you get closer to the image automatically and how you can more easily turn it on or off. Now, I don't know how often you're gonna be taking pictures of teeny tiny things or wanting to get like two inches away from something. You can see that once you get past that six to eight inch mark from your subject, the pictures start to look similar. But iPhones in general have been pretty bad at taking close up pics of things. And with the iPhone 14 Pro, not only do you get that ability, it's also obviously really good. On the flip side, the iPhone 14 Pro is also better at taking pictures of things from far away when you zoom in. With its telephoto lens, the 14 Pro uses the actual lens hardware to zoom in up to three times and then can digitally zoom in a bit further all the way to 15 times. The regular 14 is all digital zoom and maxes out at just five times. So once again, not only is the 14 Pro just better in general with the minor two and three X zooms, it also offers a capability the regular 14 doesn't have that much further zoom. But I think this is a similar story to the macro mode. Are you gonna be zooming in 10 or 15 times for every picture you take? No, definitely not. Is it nice to have though? Every once in a while, sure, but I'm not confident that it's a deal breaker with the regular iPhone 14. The other capability difference that separates the 14 Pro from the regular is the new 48 megapixel lens and corresponding shooting mode. You have to enable this within the camera settings, but with this, you're generally going to get more detailed images with better dynamic range. Now, it's relatively difficult to see at a glance, but when you zoom in and compare the 12 megapixel shots on the regular iPhone 14 to the 48 megapixel Pro Raw images on the 14 Pro, the difference suddenly becomes pretty obvious. There's essentially four times as many pixels with the 48 megapixel image. It's four times as detailed. And this is great if you're snapping pics of complex scenery or busy settings, or maybe you just wanna crop in and showcase smaller areas of your photos. You'll also see that dark areas are captured better as well. You lose less detail in those shadows. For professionals or for those of us who just want as good of a picture as possible, the Pro definitely delivers. But there's a couple of things to keep in mind here. This Pro RAW mode saves your pictures in a completely different file format, and the images take up way more space on your phone. So snapping every single picture with this mode isn't ideal if you'd like to maybe transfer the pictures to another device, or you end up taking hundreds or even thousands of them. You'll use up those gigabytes on your phone pretty quickly. But the new 48 megapixel Pro RAW mode on the 14 Pro is absolutely one of those defining features this year. So now that you understand the handful of differences, let's get into the most important thing, regular old, everyday pictures and videos. And the cold hard truth is that essentially both these phones are pretty much going to give you the same result. For most people, myself included, you're probably just gonna whip out your phone, snap the pic without changing any settings or doing anything special and call it good. And if that's the case, using the main regular camera lens without any other considerations, the pictures you take are going to look basically the same, whether you're using the regular 14 or the 14 Pro. And I think you can see that pretty easily. There may be some variations here in the white balance or the color in some of these comparisons, but that has more to do with a slight change in the scene or subject, like the lighting, the sun, a shadow, whatever it might be, than any real difference in the phones themselves. And surprisingly, this is also true with the wide angle pictures too. I was expecting the 14 Pro to be like drastically different, brighter, better in low light, more detailed, better in some capacity, but it didn't seem to be the case at all. And speaking of low light, this really surprised me. While the 14 Pro is objectively better, the difference is not as significant as I thought it would be at all. In fact, I'm relatively disappointed that there isn't more of a difference with the Pro. Both phones do an excellent job with nighttime shots, and you can absolutely see that in the most extreme situations, the 14 Pro can capture those darker areas better and show you some more detail, especially in the sky. But this is just not the big drastic difference in night mode imagery that we're used to seeing between the regular iPhone and a Pro iPhone. So to me, the regular iPhone suddenly looks really good with all its extra capabilities and improvements. It's also the same story with video, in my opinion. There's no better smartphone to capture video on than an iPhone, but this year, it doesn't matter which iPhone, the regular or the Pro. The results are basically identical. Everything from the stabilization to the focus, and again, whether you're in a well-lit room, outside in broad daylight, or filming some nighttime scenes, what you capture is very comparable. The Pro is still technically going to be a bit better at night. I think you can 
see that, but not significantly so. It's not a deal breaker, and it's not a defining feature of this phone really anymore. And this all just really surprised me. This year, while Apple definitely saved some special camera features for the iPhone 14 Pro, I think for like 90% of people, there's really no reason to get anything more than the regular iPhone 14. If a vast majority of your pictures and videos are simple, everyday stuff, what you end up capturing is just as good as the Pro device. If you want the most capabilities, the extra features, or if you're a professional, I guess, then sure, the Pro may still be worth it if you use all the extras on that phone. But it's seriously getting harder and harder to justify a Pro iPhone when the thing that's supposed to be separating it, the camera, is now closer than ever to the regular iPhone. So those are my thoughts on the Pro versus the regular iPhone 14 camera setups this year. What do you guys think? Is there any real reason to go Pro? Was there something I maybe missed? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts, of course. Hopefully you guys did enjoy this video though, or at least found it somewhat helpful. Be sure to follow Tech Daily on Twitter and subscribe to the Tech Daily YouTube channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys later.